Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Pit Talk Pulling Pits and Opinions with your host, Gunny G. We're service members help service member, period. Follow, like, subscribe, everywhere get your podcasts and on most social media platforms. Let us know how we're doing. Any criticism is good criticism. We got a special guest hailing in from Washington. He'll, he'll fill you in here in a second by the name of Jake, aka Vets in Crypto, uh, a Twitter famous. Uh, we had to have him on. So, Jake, can you say hi to the listeners for me? Yeah, what's going on, everybody? My fellow devil dog. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jake, uh, let's just get right into it. I know your time's precious. Uh, you know, we, we're both not getting paid for this. We're just kind of doing this to chop it up and network, right? But where, are you, where are you from originally? How long do you serve? Uh, what branch? And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. so uh, hailed out of <clears throat> hailed out of uh, the Midwest, out of the Chicago area. And so that, that makes me a, a Hollywood Marine. So I've been out you know 20 plus years so i'm uh yeah anyway so a hollywood marine a month uh went in a month uh right after boot camp i personally uh didn't know what i wanted to do um, i knew i wasn't ready for college first off uh looking at my older brother and everything he was just kind of partying and wasting people's money uh, so i learned from him i had i guess that that insight um from him it, it you know at first actually like some people like you hear the story a lot like I went to the uh, the army first, you know. I went knocking on their door, and uh, they didn't want me. Long story short, I you know, went and knocked on the Marines, and uh, they welcomed me in with open arms. Sometimes things are just meant to be. I've yeah. heard similar stories. People, you know, come on our door, then they end up in the Navy, or Army. Yeah, you kind of look at them, and it's like, yeah, it suits you. Yeah, <laughs> it's it crazy how it kind of fits the profile, actually. Right, right. It, 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 it it's it's a thing, I think, for sure. So, so MCRD, Hollywood Marine, uh, you know, watching those planes take off from, uh, from the airport, from San Diego, you know? So I was in from, uh, 96 to 2000. I, uh, I did a, uh, Westpac. So I was on a, like MSSG Marine Service Support Group 13. I, I was so my, okay, let's back up. So my, my, uh, MOS, Military Occupation Specialty, I was a 1345, okay. a heavy equipment operator. So A A T. Yeah. Um, so material and earth, all that good stuff. So and that suited me um, as far as being a hands-on person and uh, whatnot. Uh, that that all lined up for me. So I was uh, stationed down in uh, Del Mar, at the 21 area in Camp Pendleton, California, was my home my home duty station. You know, like I had a good experience. Like, dude, like my balcony was like I had ocean view. Like down in Del Mar, it's right on the water. You got the beach. Uh, if anyone knows, they know. Just, man, crazy parties on the holidays, the 96ers, all that. Just, just it's, yeah, it was, it was good times. Um, not everybody has a good experience when they're in, in you know, in the core and whatnot. I, I did. Uh, I just, I knew I wasn't a lifer as well, so I didn't re-up. I didn't sign another contract. I did four years, honorable discharge, good conduct, all that. It just, you know, I don't know, did my time, got in and got out. It is what it is. But it stays with you. To this day, boot camp, three months of hell, it's just, uh, it's ingrained in your fiber, your being, in your soul, and who you are. You know, like, step one, make your bed. You know, you get out and you make your fucking bed and start your day, you know? For a long time, we were doing uh, uh, Marine Corps reunions. Just whoever was local, whoever was local. Well, not even local. Just, it was more geared around the Midwest because it was easier for everybody to fly into the middle of the country and, and whatnot. Uh, it, it, it varied. Whoever can get there gets there. Bring your family, what have you. Um, you know, and usually the further we can be away from other humans, the better. Is all the debauchery, you know. One of the one of the good ones was is uh, we made our way out to uh, to uh, West Virginia. Wow! So one of our brothers, uh, his his last name is Furby. 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 So true, true, true West Virginian down in the holler. You know, good old boy. I mean, yeah. as good as they get. And I mean, like the sheriff lived a couple farms down. Like, but it was all good. Like we we're just having good wholesome fun, shooting all day barbecuing having good times but anyway it's good to stay in touch with your peeps um you know yeah uh facebook is, is for you know your parents this and that however it has worked really well for staying in touch with fellow devil dogs and yeah. your, your brothers and your sisters for that matter so it's 
Facebook works really good as, as far as that and staying in touch with each other. Like I hardly go on there, but if I want to see what people are up to, you know, friends and, and whatnot, um, you know, that's always kind of that one place where we can circle back and find each other and, and touch base if need be, um, what have you. So it, it's crazy. I know I'm kind of jumping all over, but it's crazy how with all the different forms of communication these days, like everybody chooses a different platform. Some choose WhatsApp, Signal, you know, like we're here on this platform, you know, I'm more of a, a YouTube guy from that standpoint. So I'll circle back. So, um, so I was facing at Pendleton, working in Del Mar, you know, worked my way up from, you know, private to, you know, I got out of the E4, Corporal E4, did Corporal course right there in the Del Mar and everything. You know, I just kept volunteering. So I knew I wanted to get, I wanted to go do my job. I wanted to be the tip of the spear. I wanted to see, uh, what, what it was like to be, you know, out there, uh, floating around, doing your job, et cetera, you know, out in the fleet. It's like you train, train, train. Now I want to do my job. Right. You know, so you're the bottom guy on the pole, right. You're down in, in the lot, you know, having your formations and playing games and, you know, TM and I'm a H heavy equipment guy. So we're always fixing TM in the same fit over and over and over, clean the same batteries. You're just looking busy, man. You know, it's the same. It's yeah. just, it is what it is. Keeps you out of trouble. Keeps you honest. Right. Yeah. So going through that, uh, I saw my, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters kept volunteering for different operations, you know? So we have uh, POGS, uh, which is like port operation group. So we would go down to San Diego. And we would load, you know, as the ships were coming in and out, the the, the muse and stuff, we would go down there and load all the uh, material stuff on and off the flatbed, you know, stage it in the lot. And then, boom, we'd be on the, in the in, you know, I'm working on the piers, loading, the, you know, everything uh, from dozers, the whatever, pallets, uh, whatever it was, right? So we're, so we're working by the water. Sometimes we go up to Port uh, Wainini, you know, work up there on the Navy base and, you know, up there we were working with like these rats, rat, ratchet handlers. They like they move, they they come down the big pineapples. They hook on the the connex, the shipping containers, and you're moving those big ass fifty three foot containers around and shit. The biggest thing, stacking right. them like three high and and all that. So it was just for me. It was it was a, it was, it was a good gig, right? Um, that sounds fun though. It sounds like a good time. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a job. So, so eventually, I get picked for uh, for MSFB thirteen, right? Marine Service Support Group. There, I transfer over to main side. Uh, so I think what was it? Uh, whatever area that is, twenty two or uh, the double deuce, man. Well, uh, maybe thirteen, but yeah, man, God, we hang out the double deuce, bro. Well, anyway. Anyway. area. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was yeah. Well, I think that if I if I recall correctly. It was like that was way back. Like nobody like messed with us. I don't know in the nah, barracks back there. Back in nineteen ninety, we said nineteen ninety four. Man, that wasn't even built up. It was some old little dirt. Is across right now? It's across from the the strip, this air station. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think there was an E club. I don't know if there's an E club over there or not. Or maybe that's just we just coined it as that's where we were from. Star barracks were and stuff back in ninety six. So at that point, I was in at ninety six. I did the. Uh, the Mew at like 99, so 99 to 2000. So we had our work up, right, and all that, doing CAC uh, out there at uh, the Stump, 29 Palms, doing all that good fun stuff, you know. So, yeah, man, so we'd be, all right, so jump to another thing here. So we're out packs and stuff, right? So we want to get the, the great idea to uh, let's do some material handling in the pitch black, wearing NVDs, you know, all, all this, you know, you're trying to get your fourth time. You know, and you you know, not jack up the side of the the the, the, the LVF and shit like that, and you know, uh, like it was tough, man. Especially their shit goggles back then, like you know, like you couldn't see here is all the fucking blurry. You know what the fuck? Yeah. You know, like, I think it's straight. You know, you got a brown guy. Somebody's right there telling you, you know, up, down, whatever. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, what what can you do? Yeah. You know, but one of the funnest things I got to do when I was out at CAX was uh, I did a, in a, I was, we went up in a C-846 and I got to shoot a 50 cal right. uh, out of out of a C-846, you know. Um, we had some targets and rubber tires and shit on the ground and stuff. And so, you know, I don't know, little things. Sounds so. like a good time. I don't know. You had a good time, sounds like. Yeah, you know, it is very good. So, so 
do the thirteenth meal. Uh, you know, it was just timing, man. You know, we put ourselves out there. Our time, you know, just didn't get called. We were floating around. It was right before things got stupid, you know. Um, so every two weeks, we're in a limbo port. Uh, obviously, in and out of Hawaii. We went to, uh, we we're in Hong Kong for New Year's. Uh, hit Phuket, Bali, we, uh, Australia. God bless. Oh, that, was a, that, was a, that, was a, that was a great time. Oh, my God. Yeah, God bless them. Uh, did, 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 a, did a month in uh, Mombasa, Kenya. And so there, we actually did a little bit of work. We did, uh, for like three or four days, we did a humanitarian operation, the Port, Port Reef Clinic. Uh, it was a medical clinic there. And we just helped out. So I was part of the engineer detachment in the Marine Service Support Group. So we had bulk fuelers, uh, carpenters, water guys, you know, did the ropu showers, yeah. bulk fuelers, uh, heavy equipment, electricians, right? Like, we, we set up the camp in the middle of the desert, right? Where those guys are uh, building the berm, you know, the yeah. whole thing there. And so the Lord we worked work, for dude. three days. Yeah, man. So we worked for three days uh, at the clinic. You know, we're taking convoys, right, from from the ship, you know, through town. We're locked and loaded. You know, you have your locals escorting us there, blah, blah, blah. We get there. We pack up our rifles while we're working during the day and stuff. We're, we're like building benches, porta johns, beds, re redoing some interior work, et cetera. The Navy is doing processing. So the Navy can only process so many people for medical treatment. So whether it's dental, eye vision, what have you, helping the, doing the locals. Each day, the word would spread that we were there and free medical and this and that, right? So each day, the line would get bigger. The capacity hasn't changed. We can only still facilitate so many people and process so many people getting seen. By the third day, tensions are getting pretty high because the locals just want assistance. And, like, like the, they're, they're shaking the gate, you know, they're getting a little rowdy, you know, this and that. And, you know, like, for, for Muse, you train for riot, uh, for going in, you know, um, you know, doing the uh, embassy, like you had to go in, right? I hear that and fly everybody out, all that good stuff. So anyway, so nothing came of that, fortunately. It, it died down. But it was just a shame that we couldn't help everybody, bottom yeah. line. Um, so after that, we partied uh, on, on the resorts for the rest of the month. Eventually, we got a bomb threat. Al-Qaeda found out that we were there. Uh, and then we just, we left real quick. And then we were back, back out in the ocean, you know? So after 90 days out in the water, you get, like, two beers, you know? After 90 days, you get two beers, right? So you're bartering, and, you know, like, hey, man, what can I give you for your beer ticket? You know, this and that, and yada, yada. And they're like, dude, man, like, dude, to be drinking, like, Listerine and shit. Like, stupid stuff, man. Just, yeah, man. Fuck, dude. It's just crazy shit alone or i don't know man just anything with alcohol yeah. like it, it, yeah for some for some people so then we went up to the gulf uh we did a we just spent a month in kuwait we we you know unloaded all of our crap and went out to the desert um you know uh built 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 up a, a camp in the middle of nowhere and provided all the utilities electric everything and we spent a month out there and then packed it all up and Hit Bahrain and did all that. So on your way back, when you when you hit Hawaii back before you come back to California, um, you, you they do a tiger cruise. So uh, your loved ones and friends, you have the option, uh, the ability to uh, bring them on board with you from Hawaii back to as you cruise from Hawaii back to San Diego. That's cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Not so cool when you're enlisted because you're still down in the pit and like life sucks, you know. Yeah. Compared to as if you're compared to if you're an officer and you know eating the good stuff. But man, it, you know everything changes when the cities come on board. Oh, the food, the steak, you know, the lobster, like everything comes out right. The the taxpayers are on board. It gets better. Yeah. It never, you know, same old stuff. It doesn't fail. Uh, you know, so that's the uh, you know that's how it goes. But it's super cool. So I did that. Quick story. I did that as an enlisted. I didn't bring anybody on when I did that. But however, fast forward, uh, my cousin, who was a CAG on the Nimitz, I got to be on the Tiger Cruise as his guest. So oh. he was the CAG. He was the CAG, like the number two guy in the boat, right? Yeah. So life was really awesome. 
So now we're sleeping, you know, like fast forward 20 years later, I get to see what the other half lives like, right? Go upstairs, you know? <laughs> so I can't get a card key for the corners, you know, where all the officers, the pilots sleep and all this stuff and eating in the, the officer's mess and, and whatnot and sitting in a briefing. And, you know, just it was just a, a cool, different perspective from from where I was 20 years as an enlisted to seeing how they operate upstairs and all that good stuff. Yeah. That's but, good, uh, That's awesome. Look, I'll tell you what. That sounds like a, you had a blast on the Mew. Uh, hopefully, obviously, you came back safe, so thank you. But I would, I would say thank you for your service, you know, back in 1996, 2000. Uh, it was a different time for everybody, right? Um, but you transitioned now from Pendleton. Where'd you go from there? Or are you stayed in Cali? No, I, uh, you know, I, I'm fucked, man. So get back off the boat, right? You have two weeks to live, all right? So I go back home to the Midwest, right? So, yeah, man. So the first pretty girl gave me the time of day, you know, like had my attention. And, you know, so two weeks later, I get back to Cali. She flies out to Cali. We elope. A month later, she's pregnant. And, you know, we elope out there and, and whatnot in Cali. And, you know, now I'm, I'm checking out, you know, fast forward nine months. The kid's born. You know, hey. Best fifty dollars I ever spent, man. It was you know to have the kid born in the naval hospital. It was, it was fifty bucks. You, you can't beat that, man. Yeah. You, like, you can't beat that. Well, good stuff. So then a month later, after the kid's born, pack up the U-Haul and head back to the Midwest. And yeah, you know, I you know, I've been an entrepreneur ever since I got out of the service, out of the core. Mm. When it is doing satellite installations and stuff, and now I'm just a uh, specialty contractor, what have you. So have employees, et cetera. Uh, and that kind of leads me into free, ha, freeing up some time. So I front loaded my life, did all the hard shit up front, uh, working hard and, and grinding as a contractor and everything and, and whatnot. And so now, now I live out in Seattle, um, you know, having an employee and whatnot that, that frees up my life, uh, a little bit to a degree, um, to explore the crypto side, right? So hence the name, Vets in Crypto, uh, for a long, so it started in 2017, I was mining Ethereum, uh, with a lot of help, a lot of people walked me through setting all that up and everything. I'm not a computer guy or anything, but doing the satellite stuff and troubleshooting, it'll help me. I can plug stuff in and follow directions and all that. They gave me enough crayons to, to paint the picture and I figured yeah. it out, you know? So, so got you that. And then only like the last four years did I find a, I found a community. I got into, uh, hack, com. you know, is a, uh, you're thanking your coin. Uh, and it's a, a way for you to self custody your crypto. So what we saw, uh, so you fast forward, uh, this last, you know, last bear. Or so it's been a long bear market. Jesus, people are losing their minds right now. This shit needs to turn around. Like, it's been brutal. Uh, so that, but that's a good sign, though, because we're close. We're close. Anyways, so, um, I'll leave the commander in chief stuff alone. Um, but we're hoping for the right person to get in that crypto friendly. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, fast forward, get into that. Oh, so what was happening is, uh, people were, were giving up their self custody of their crypto. To these uh, exchanges like Three Arrows, uh, Sam Bakeman Creed with FTX, you know, well, give us your tokens and we'll give you 20% yield, you know, this and that. Well, you don't have custody because you just gave them your stuff in hopes that the stranger on the internet, is, is, you know, is going to give you X amount of yield or APR for holding this stuff. Well, they're using your stuff as collateral. And get more money and everything. So it's, it was just a huge, like, Ponzi scheme. The Robin Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. And eventually, because you gave up the custody of your tokens, you got your ex shit. You got nothing. You know, they, they went poop. It's not, it's not FBIC insured or anything like that. So that's where you get into, like, there's a difference between a, a central exchange, a sex, C-E-X, central exchange, uh, for example, like Coinbase. Coinbase is a central exchange. Obviously, they're uh, they're they're public now and whatnot. But very clearly, even in their term, to their term, if they go belly up, if you have crypto with them, if they go belly up, 
it's there. You, you don't own it. Now, if you're holding cash, right? So you transfer, and I always recommend uh, doing a wire transfer from your bank account into, like, let's say uh, Coinbase, for example, because it goes instant, right? Yes, you're paying a $25 fee, et cetera, but when you're trying to get something in money and move money in in a timely fashion, um, ACH, automatic tech clearing, takes forever. It, that's like multiple days. And then if you're new, you're just setting up a new account, like they'll put your stuff on freeze. It'll be, it'll be held yep. for like five, seven days. And you may miss a window to get in an opportunity, right? To speculate on something. That's all crypto is speculation, right? So the number one rule is don't invest money that you're, don't invest more than you're willing to lose. Uh, don't ever, you know, put your rent money, pay all your bills first. You know, like it, all this stuff has to be said because people just over leverage, they take out loans, then things, oh, this is a for sure thing, it's going to go, it's, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. There's hard lessons to be learned. Um, you, you know, a lot of people follow the wrong people. There's influencers on YouTube and this and that. Well, while these influencers are telling you, promoting one thing, they already have a bunch of the supply and they're cheating selling on the back end they'll promote tell you to buy 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 but on the back end these assholes are, are selling on the back end etc so you gotta watch who you follow and, and all that is the big thing self-custody is what is key meaning you wanna you wanna open up your own wallet whether it's metamask or a rabbi wallet uh rabbi wallet so far like i made this transition from metamask to rabbi now these are like uh like a browser extension so if you go to like a Google extension for your browser and you type in MetaMask or, or Rabby and, and make sure you have like the blue check mark, everything, you got to verify everything, everything. There's so many scams out there. Uh, for those of you that are on X and, and stuff, Twitter, uh, you'll see people, like anything with money, people, the, the scammers, they create fake profile. Even like if I was clicking on your, your site, Gunny. Like, you want to make sure, like, I know Gunny has, like, 50,000 people, right? But next thing I see, well, Gunny likes something of mine, I click on it, he only has 100 followers. Or, you know, he's follow yeah, yeah, 100 followers. These are little indicators. You got to verify stuff. It's just, there's so many scams, you know, in the crypto world. We, we uh, like to verify things through multiple sources before clicking on anything. Because you are always just one click away from losing everything. Yeah. That's how good these. That, yeah, that's how these. That's how good these guys are. Jake, how did you get? To, what made you call it vets in crypto? What what gave you? Yeah, yeah. Let me cir circle back. That my my last piece on on security is a hardware wallet. So I recommend Rabby. Rabby's been great. Uh, but then get a. I like Trezor. There's Ledger and Trezor. So and the last thing I'll say on that is order it directly from the manufacturer. Do not order that kind of stuff from Amazon because people intercept it. They put, you know, malware and stuff on it, put the wow. security seal back on and ship it to you. Now everything you do is key log and they got, they got the keys of the kingdom, man. So, wow. it, it, so that's my last piece of there. So, uh, that's in crypto. So I was trying to find a, a niche because everybody does technical analysis and, uh, all of these things. I was really find, trying to find a need, and it, there's a lot of military veterans and first responders uh, in the crypto world, right? I just, you know, I just observing for two or three years, I was like, I want to do something. I want to pay it forward, you know, create something. So thus, I started for a couple of years running just, just the name, you know, Vets in Crypto. Uh, for a while, it was spelled with a K. Uh, because that was when the three letter agencies were all up in Twitter and Google and mm -hmm. like during COVID and all that. And there was just, there was no freedom of speech. Uh, they're just, they were just, yeah, just, they're curb stomping you left and right. Like it was ugly. So thank God Elon had taken over us. So talk about freedom of speech and everything we, we, we believe in and fight for. A lot of people want to destroy that piece of paper, that thing called the constitution. Yeah. But but not not on our watch, man. Like no, it, I would no. say. I mean, look, those rules that I gave you a long time ago earlier, they're for me. They're not for you. So you you can stay and do as you please. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just oh, FYI, right? But back to investing crypto with a K, you know? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, um, fast forward, you want to take over X and all that. You don't have to worry about all that, that stuff and then the C word, all that, blah, 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 the virus, the Kung Fu virus and shit, you know? And, uh, so I, I, you know, so now it's just vets and crypto, common spelling, what have you. I actually, uh, created a, um, uh, 501c3, uh, corporation, nonprofit corporation. Uh, uh that's how it would get in the series. But because you do see these people, these scammers that'll, that'll create and they'll be like, oh, we're for charity. They'll give us your money. We'll put it towards a good cause, this and that. And, like, nah, man. So in true DeFi, decentralized finance, you want it to be, like, automated. The big thing is, like, you want to cut out the middleman, right? And that's the whole thing with the central banking uh, and this whole C uh, CB CBDC, the central bank digital dollar. That's a bad thing, people. You do not want that because you will not have privacy. The government will know absolutely everything you do when Amen. it's a digital dollar. When yeah. you change in that cash, Pass is king. Pass is king. That saying, it's true. It's true. So, anyway. So, to pay it forward to veterans and first responders, I created a, a YouTube channel, Vets in Crypto. I have a co-host, Randy Hilarski. He's a Navy veteran. Uh, he's an expat, actually. Because uh, when he got out of the Navy in Panama, uh, that's where he was stationed, down in Panama. Wow. So when he got out, there's a lot of Americans, you know, expats in, in Panama, actually. You know, he married a, a local down there and has a kid and all that and, and whatnot. And it's worked out well for him. So we do a, a weekly show covering everything just from just chopping it up. We're just, you know, like we hope to, you know, if, if this goes well, maybe you'll come on our show. like <laughs> to chop it up with you, you know. It's laid back if you catch an episode or two. If you just go into YouTube, type in vets. In crypto, C R Y P T O, uh, you'll pull it up and see all the different stuff we do uh, and highlight and and whatnot from there. So it's all about veterans and first responders. We raise enough money. Uh, we have a public address and whatnot, and it, it's out there. Everyone can see anything that comes into it. Ultimately, we want to pay it forward to like tunnel tunnel the towers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of Manion Foundation, etc. Right? EOD Warriors, etc. Uh, just to pay it forward, man. So, like, we, we, we all believe, you know, like, crypto's going to work out and, you know, it's going to do good. Well, can we not pay it forward and give something back to those communities and the reasons why we are where we are and have the ability yeah. to, to do what we do for where we're at? So, that's awesome, Jake. That's actually, that's, that's really good, man. I appreciate you, you taking the time to do that. 501C, I've heard about that before as well. Betsy Crypto, I, I'll make sure I'll hit that YouTube follow and subscribe. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, it's all about giving back to the veterans. It's all about giving back to service members. And then you're doing it, you're paying it forward really well. And I appreciate that, man. Cause when I get out, but what, what, what makes you, what makes you different than, uh, and I got, I got to ask, you know, obviously crypto is crypto. I don't know too much about it. I don't have, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I'm not that interested in it, but it does seem very lucrative, right? When you do, when it does pay out, what makes yeah. you different than these crypto business, these crypto, uh, people? than you what's 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 the biggest difference between you and them so there's many different uh tokens and and chains l1 layer one chains so an l1 is like ethereum for example right? uh bitcoin um is, is a layer one right so um those uh entities it's all dependent upon how they're ran so solana People are going crazy right now, you know, blah, blah, blah. But there, you know, there's a Solana overall is a centralized L1, meaning that there are people that can control it, that can turn it off. No single person or group of people, if it's true decentralized finance, should be able to flip a switch and turn something off. So when it, when it, true decentralized finance, it's immutable. It's self custody. Nobody once it once the code is launched out into the wild, it, it it's out there forever. It can't be shut down. It can't be removed. There's no middlemen. So transition from what I was explaining before, like a, a sex, a central exchange, 
Yeah. You know, there's a bunch of fees. So they, they, you know, like Coinbase, they make their money from the fees. Everything you do, there's a fee. And, but there's middlemen. I mean, these guys, these people working and whatnot, they're the ones making the money. So you, you transition to what's called a DEX, D-E-X, Delta Echo X-Ray. How about that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so a DEX is a decentralized exchange, and that is a where it's, it's immutable. It's just automatic. It's just you and the code. So I want to swap token A for token B. You know, I put that number in there, and it does it. it you know, it's, it's automatic. It's in the code. It does it. You know, so the platform, the protocol gets a small, you know, 0.021% of the fee. Uh, depending on how they design it, let's say like Pulsex gets, goes back to a buy and burn and reduces the supply of that native tokens for that exchange, things like that. So that's just, it, it's a big, long topic, but self custody, immutable things, something that's not centralized is what you know the camp that i'm in i'm in i'm in a camp of, of self-custody and decentralized finance not centralized and giving people money them you know it's like we say no middlemen you know yeah 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 you, you, you all cut them out absolutely more money for you right more money for i mean the individual investor uh rather than me going there and there and there and then then getting my cut right they get instead of yeah. getting their cut first, I get my cut first. That's good. That's a, yeah. that's a huge difference. That would definitely reel me in. So that's awesome. I tell you what. Yeah. How long have you been doing? How long have you been doing bets uh, in crypto with Randy? Um, I mean, maybe a year. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe a year. I mean, not not super long. A few months coming up to a year. Yeah. So he has a group. So one thing I learned. So initially, I was running around Twitter and YouTube. And in trying to glean bits and little nuggets of information here or there, what's the greatest, what's hottest, how should I make my play, this and that. But it takes a lot of time. You're yeah. watching like a three-hour YouTube stream just to, to glean one or two nuggets, you know, and this and that. Um, and you only have so much time, right? Yeah. So, so like this cycle, I'm, uh, I've joined a couple of different paid, private paid groups. And so like Randy Halarski holds one called No Permissions. So he uses a platform called Patreon. Ah. So you go on to Patreon, pay your monthly, and then that gives you access to, they have Telegram, private Telegram groups and, and that, this and that. It, it, you have now a group of trusted individuals in yeah. that community that have each other's interest in, 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 a lot, in security at mind, right? You're not right. just dealing with Joe, Joe Blow stranger on the internet. Now these are vetted people. They're paying into it, you know, so we're all scouring, getting information and then bringing it back. And then we'll have a, a Zoom call uh, like twice a week and we go over what we have, what's hot, what's going on. Yeah. I share information, all of that. So from a time standpoint, it helps a lot. It's dramatic. It helps a lot. So, That's good. Uh, I'd say, I'd say I'm about to do my little research to see what's going on. I know you invited me to a group and I'm, I'm in there reading all the comments and reading what you post. It's a. It's interesting stuff. I'll tell you yeah. what, you got out back in, well, I mean, we're going to kind of recap. We got back out in 2000. You have a family? Yes, no, maybe so. Wife, kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, hold on here. Family and everything. Living the dream. Uh, entrepreneur, yeah, yeah. investing in crypto. You got a good thing going. Uh, but all that all that does weigh on you, on your shoulders in terms of providing as a husband, as a father, as a man. Right. And then you have adversity, right? You got to build a little bit of resilience. How does that, how does that, how did this whole full circle, how does this affect, how did it affect you initially with your family trying to find, you know, all that good stuff to provide? Well, so, so let's just start. So I, uh, I was, I was, so right out of the gate, I was, uh, I had 20% disability from the VA. Now I am uh, up to 70% pretty, pretty recently. So that would be the biggest thing in, 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 well, A, you know, document everything, right? So I was fortunate, like people were passing the word down, um, you know, make sure everything is documented in your medical service record, like everything, right? Cause that's going to come into play later on. And especially, you know, go through the process when you check out, 
you know, go like submit your claims or, you know, you messed up your knee, whatever. Things that may not ail you now are going to fucking bite you in the ass 20 years later. Yeah. So we, we donate our bodies to the military, to the government. It doesn't give a shit about us. They tell us, do this, do that. We thrash our bodies. You don't think about it or feel it in, in the present while you're doing it, but you pay for it later in life. Sure. Whether, you know, like whether you're, you're playing around in the sand in Kuwait, uh, before or after or what have you, uh, I was burning, I was burning trash. I was burning shit, uh, literally burning, burning shit. We dumped diesel in the, in the can, light it on fire. Maybe, maybe, maybe you had a handkerchief or a keycard. You know, uh, wrapped around your face, you didn't know any better, right? And that's where like uh, the 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 PACT Act uh, comes into play for those that are out and using the VA benefits and everything. Um, and so you know, list everything. There are private or uh, groups and organizations that'll help you navigate the VA and everything. They want to cut. They'll walk you through the process and and you know what have you, but you're filing the paperwork and whatnot. You got to do the interviews, but you either do a psych eval or you go in and see the doc and they, you know, they poke and prod and whatnot. Yeah. But, um, because the VA, like, you know, they don't, their job is like to find reasons why not to take care of you. Um, Interesting. You, you I, thought look that, out. I thought that was you, the other way around. I thought they were finding reasons to take care of you. That's crazy. Anyways, well, continue. well, they do and they don't, right? There's so many, so much red tape uh, that you need, you need assistance in navigating how mm. to get to that point. And that's why you see a lot of organizations that are out there um, that do help and assist. So do your research. Basically, bottom line is you're not going to pay anything unless you get awarded something. You know, once you do get awarded a percentage with the VA, you know, you, that's for life. And that's not, that's non-taxable. You don't ever have to claim it. It's your money tax-free you do whatever the hell you want with it it's one of the best things ever so once you get it you know it's great so do your research file your claims um and you deserve it you know don't let yourself like this money is appropriated already years in advance you know and then once you're in it yeah it goes up with social security as far as uh, cost of living and what have you so once you're in it goes up incrementally based on everything um but you man you did your time you you may you may think i'm gonna you know i have buddies all the time they're like oh, i don't deserve it you know they're they're trash they're infantry guys but they have bad knees bad back but hey man i got all my limbs i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna save the money for the next guy you know yeah. who really needs it blah, blah. It's, it's get out of your own way and because like you did your time you deserve that rating you know, take care of yourself, what have you. That money is already appropriated. It, you know, like, don't, people got to get that thinking out of their head. Yeah, no, that's it. That's, that's good. Touch, you touched on it. Get out of your own way, man. You deserve it. You did your time honorably. Take yeah. advantage of, take advantage of uh, what the, I mean, play the game just like they're playing, right? They're taking your time. Let's, let's take advantage of the yeah. chess game and make the right moves for you and your family. Absolutely. Take Take advantage. Well, I, and I plan on it when I retire as well to take advantage of the, of the benefits yeah. that I get after my honorable service. So, to those listening, yeah. hey, Jake said it. I'm saying it. Hey, it's not. It's not shameful. Let go of your pride, your ego out the door. We talk. We say it in the weight room, and leave your ego at the door. We're all here to do the same thing and lift weights. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what you lift as long as you're here, getting yeah. better. You're here. You came into the weight room, right? You're here. Like, it, like that's half the battle. Absolutely. Again, that's good gouge day. Thank you for that. I do got to ask though, you know, we live in a current culture where we're having more suicides. We're having more mental health with our service members prior to and during combat or during war, wartime uh, eras. And now we're suffering for some odd reason we're suffering. And you can't pinpoint what or who or why. There's numbers everywhere. You know, you could say whatever you want about it, but we're suffering. There's mental health issues. There's Service members are yep. committing uh, suicide. We got to give back to the community in that way, and we got to provide tools for the toolbox. Jake, what yeah. has helped you along the way, 20, 20 plus years later, and you're still thriving? I'm, I'm not saying that you're you're the perfect, you know, pea in the pea pot, but you yep. know, everybody has their struggles. But what are you doing now that's that's helping you and your family and those around you? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so well, first off, the the marine reunions, right? Um, 
being around your fellow brothers, your comrades, you know, being all around like-minded individuals is everything. That that helps. Just, just letting others know that you're there for them, you know, ears open, you know, listen, and, and just be a good friend, you know, if, if you are in that regard. You start a community. Anybody can do something, start something. But yeah, the, the, the suicide rate is, is crazy. We got to help each other. You know, I have a, I have a cousin that's uh, Navy EOD. He has breachers syndrome and stuff, you know, from breaching doors and blowing shit up, you know, that's what they do, right? It's a real thing. It's PTSD and all that. And, you know, they try different things, what have you. Some, some, some of it is, you know, come Counseling, talking to somebody. If you just bottle it up and don't tell anybody, like my neighbor, man, he was he was in Iraq and he, you know, like like whenever we would drink heavy, it would come out and like he'd be he'd, like he'd be in the fetal position, just rocking back and forth, and wow. it's a real real yeah man. So, but now I I you know I talked to him about like and his excuse was like oh I tried I tried getting in the VA they denied me. And this was years ago, right? And so I just, I, we just kept, you know, pushing them. Like, that was years ago. It's changed. The VA administration changes with every administration that comes into office. Hmm. So some years, they may, there may, they may be like a, heart, a lot of no's and cancellations. Different administration comes in, and they're approving everybody. You just got to play the game and know who's in, if they're friendly or not friendly. Unfortunately, it's not an unbiased thing. I, I hate to say it. It should be, yeah. but it's it's not, unfortunately. Well, the VA has gotten better, uh, better and worse here and there. There's now finally some community care, like under Trump uh, presidency, they opened up community care. So if you're not, you know, close enough or you're outside a certain range of a, of a, a veteran's hospital or if um, appointments are longer than 30 days, then you get you have the right to choose community care, which means you can go visit a chiropractor or get some yeah. physical therapy like five minutes from your house. That's awesome. I just the other day, just the other day, the ear infection and I use urgent care. So in this area, we have Indigo Urgent Care, and they are in the VA uh, circle for inference, what have you, like TRICARE, uh, what have you, right? But the caveat with that is they cannot look you up in the system. There's no way for them to look you up in the system. You have to ask, you have to ask them to call to verify your status. And I did that. I literally got turned away. They're like, we can't verify, blah, blah, blah. Because they're trying to strip find stuff on the computer. So I got turned away, but I didn't give up. I went to the car. I was like, dude, and I know these guys are in, are in network, you know? So I started doing some guy on the VA.gov, pulled it up and found a phone number. Called the phone number. I'm sitting in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, you know, telling me that what I just told you. That they got to call in, give them this number. It's 24-7. They'll give us your name and your last four. We'll verify. Tell them you're in network and everything's covered. Went back in, followed that guy's instructions, and you know, I got seen. You know, I had no out of pocket expense. Yeah. So it's just, awesome. Just do your due diligence and research stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Community care sounds like a legit, legit deal. I mean, you're so far away from the VA and VA hospitals. That's yeah. Hey, thank you, President Trump for 45th. I appreciate that. Implementing that policy. I do. I do, do got to yeah. say. You know the ones that are not here no more that made that 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 made that ultimate decision or took that ultimate decision and instead of take that step forward. If you could speak to them right now and give them the advice that would help them before they made the decision, what would it be? To, to join or or, or suicide, no. mental health, suicide, that part. You know, just um, you know, I, you know, maybe some of us at one point in time or another have have dealt with that demon those voices in your head sometimes can can get loud and hopefully you know there's, there's a lot of you know phone numbers out there and call this and call that but if you're if you're really having a mental breakdown like like you yourself may not know to call or, or, be, or have that capacity so the more people and the more information like this that we spread and we put out there and make people aware that this this is a thing and that if you see somebody in distress that needs help to be that person to talk you know listen or do the research and call that mental health crisis phone number for them um 
and, and going back to the voices getting loud in your head and stuff, sometimes depending on what people are taking pharmaceutical wise, you know, and it hasn't been a good thing because sometimes a lot, a lot of times the VA is pumping the veterans with a lot of pharmaceuticals and sometimes the pharmaceuticals don't agree with them. And that's when they have episodes or issues. The VA is, is finally starting to uh, experiment with marijuana and mushrooms, HC and uh, I, uh, what's the mushroom name? Um, anyways, and, and even anyways, they're doing a lot more research for the mental health side of it. And I've talked to plenty of veterans that are they're out that have used marijuana, whether whatever form. And nowadays there's edible, there's there's drop, uh, what have you. That has helped them wean themselves off of the bad pharmaceuticals uh, and help them keep up an, an even enough heal to keep their fit together. Yeah. So there, there's other avenues, other approaches besides big pharma. Big pharma is not our friend, people. Like, we have to find other alternatives. It's, it's not the cure-all out there by any means. So for me, when I went down that uh, brief rabbit hole, uh, I thought of my kid. When I finally circled back and checked off all the different reasons and things, I wanted to live for my kid. I wanted to be around for my kids, bottom line. So for me, it was, it was La Familia. I didn't want to be yeah. selfish, uh, bottom line. So that's good. For, for everybody, it's different. But you, yeah, you know, I mean, it, I mean, that's that's good, right? For you, is your is your kids, is your family, but you circled back and you found purpose, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, you found purpose. And and for those that are listening, and for those that are struggling, and and considering taking that thirty inch step in that direction, I'd say circle back. What was what was it? What got you here? What purpose do you have? And if you don't, if you can't find one, go ask and look for one yeah. and, and circle join, back. Join a group. Join, yeah. Find something that is fulfilling. Now, perhaps you're, you're missing something that is, doesn't complete you. Hmm. Whether it's a hobby, even. There are so many veteran groups out there. Through life, I don't have a, a single set of friends. I have multiple sets of friends that like to do different hobbies and, and like to do different things, whether it's camping, skydiving, shooting, what have you. Not, you know, like not everybody likes to do the same thing you do, right? So you find other sets of friends and, and hopefully there, you know, there's some uh, military friends because they, they, you just get each other. And yeah. we're, we're regardless of the branch that you're in, um, you all do share a common bond and can share similar you can have stories and experiences, yeah. you know, and that's the bond. Like when you're out there camping around a fire and, and shooting the shit, um, that's what it's about. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely, Jake. Hey, Jake, thanks for, thank you for your time, for your, your, your knowledge in crypto. Who should we look for? What do we look for? This mental health advice for those su suffering with mental health and taking that 30 inch step here. Hopefully we deterred some of them. Um, yeah, man. It was say, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't follow uh, Jake and Vets in Crypto, hit him up on Twitter, YouTube, I mean, whatever else you're on, hit him up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Pit Talk Forum and Pits and Opinions with your host, Benny G, and Jake with Vets in Crypto, uh, where service members help service center, period. Follow, like, everywhere you get your podcasts and on all social media platforms. So that's not how we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, we out. Jake, hey. I'll see you up later, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Featuring active service members to discuss their thoughts and opinions on various issues surrounding military life, current events, and history. The statements heard here are the opinions of its members and guests. These do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of Defense and are not endorsed or sponsored in any way. Listener, you are discretion advised.